The majority of Liberians live in poverty and nearly half the population is illiterate. VOA's Paul Sisko introduces us to a self-taught entrepreneur and journalist in Monrovia who is promoting literacy awareness and freedom of the press in a unique way. The Daily Talk is composed, printed and read each day right here on Tubman Boulevard in Monrovia. Alfred Sirleaf is its founder, producer, publisher, owner, and managing editor. The so-called information evangelist is reaching the public with the day's news using chalk and slate. You got lots of people into the society who can afford to buy the newspaper, magazine, who can afford internet services, and they see this as the only means or mediums of communications where they come and use it as a uh, resource area to carry on information dissemination and to get informed of community and national news, international as well. In a small office behind the blackboard, he sifts through newspapers and radio reports, checks sources and puts together and writes the daily talk. The stories come from the newspaper, they come from the radio, they come from text messages on the phone, they come from volunteers around in communities, counties, and all over Liberia. Mr. Sirleaf is passionate about informing Monrovians. He also leads discussions of the day's news. I love the little newspaper because it is for the commoners. Those who do not have money to buy the newspaper in those streets, peddlers can read the little and get out of the little. When it comes in simple English, you know, for our uh, uh, local languages, they come in, you know, he break it down for us, you know, so we understand it better. To help them actually understand what's going on, I have to come down to them, you know, in their vernacular or substandard English or broken English, Liberian English, and make sure that they also understand what is going on. The daily talk runs on Sirleaf's hard work, a network of volunteers and donations. He's been jailed, his blackboard damaged and shut down on occasion, but his free press persists. He hopes to expand the chalkboard newspaper with several more so he can bring the daily talk to readers all over Liberia. Paul Sisko, VOA News. Well, we're joined now by Alfred Solif himself via phone from Mon Monrovia. Welcome to In Focus. Alfred, you know, I have to say I'm so inspired by your story. You're 33 years old now. You started this daily talk 10 years ago, and I'm just curious about what inspired you to take on this. Actually, I got inspired by, by, by media activities I, I sometimes go, you know. Uh, but it all started from the Liberian civil crisis. You know, in Liberia, we experienced a 14-year civil unrest where people were, uh, were closed up in an era, we had no base of communication, and that really inspired me. I saw the curiosity on the streets of Liberia, in, 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 in refugee camps and internally displaced camps, and they wanted to get informed. They wanted to call up their quota towards building this fragile, the post-war state. But they had no means. And Liberia is, is now a poverty-driven state. All of these things actually inspired me to have established this digital chalkboard newspaper to have the people informed. And from what I have understand, the Liberian people very want to read. They want to know what's happening. They want to know what is important. They want to go to video quota, but they lack this means of communication. So if somebody can sacrifice his time and effort in this direction, they will appreciate it. And they have shown to me that they have appreciated my effort for the past time. And, um, when I you know... In, in, Alfred, obviously, they do appreciate it. We heard uh, the testimony itself right there in the story that Paul did. Now, what, one other thing that I want to mention, that obviously, you don't just re reproduce what you, you write. You actually research, you investigate, you report. You're essentially a publishing house. But then I also gather that you touch on very controversial issues that could get you into trouble with the government. Have you been arrested recently with the Salif government for some of the things you've highlighted, including the lack of electricity in, the, in Monrovia, in Liberia, which uh, had been promised? No, no. The Salif government ha has never uh, threatened me or arrested me before. I only experienced it during a regime of charge killer, where I was arrested, detained briefly, put in cells, and later when I came up, I went into exile in Ghana in 2000. 
uh, two in a kind of lady in 2003 and reestablished the Chokbo Leap. But it was destroyed twice by members of Charles Peter, uh, uh anti terrorist unit and ATU. But from this government, I have not experienced anything as such I mean, uh, yet. But however, you know, the work of the media is to keep the government or uh, those in society on their toes to make sure that things go right. So mm -hmm. I can or oh, don't want to be in a position to face the present government because who knows, sometimes maybe a, a story will come out that the public need and I could blow it out and somebody will say, hey, mm -hmm. she has come by the game. So my focus point here is to get the people informed and educated. That's my objective. You now, know, also, so you know, in front of you. Alfred, I'm sorry I keep cutting you, but we want to get to this before we go. You do not get paid for what you do. You've been doing this for so long. You depend on donations. I'm just curious, and I'm sure a lot of people are too. How have you been able to sustain yourself all this time? Oh, I, I, I sustain myself actually from little donations. Sometimes people give and to daily talk. I used to get stationaries and other things to keep the media moving. I got a staff of five president and I keep up to them and make sure that I encourage them with the little I have. But we are informing the public on a constraint. We, we lack material. I mean, there's no equipment at all. And I speak to you, no laptop, no desktop computer, nothing, no vehicle, nothing. We just sacrifice our time yet. And these are people who have uh, volunteered their services to, to help the Latin people. Thank you so much, Alfred Salif. Thank you.